Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to take a look at something a little bit different, which we are normally a PC centric channel, but we're going to the dark side with a Mac Mini. And one of the first things you're going to notice when you get yourself a Mac Mini is the fact that, yes, it is very compact, but also it's severely lacking in ports. So on the front, you've got USB C, two of those, got a headphone jack. So, yeah, that's kind of okay. On the back, Again, very limited power, Ethernet, HDMI, and three USB-C ports. So that's pretty good in terms of connectivity for faster devices. But what about those of us that actually like to plug in other things which are on a Type A? So you can go down and have the whole kind of dongle life thing where you've got a little dongle and various cables everywhere. But that isn't particularly nice and clean looking. So I was looking for a suitable docking station for my Mac Mini and come across this one. So this is from Ugreen. This is the CM841, otherwise known as part number 65487. I'll put some links in the video description so you can check it out for yourselves. But this is actually a very cool device. So what we've got is a docking station, which is this here, and it connects with just a single USB type C connection on a very short cable. This is specifically designed for the Mac Mini M4 and also the Mac Mini M4 Pro. So if you've got either one of those, this is going to be absolutely great for you. And what it does is adds extra ports, which obviously we're screaming out for. So on the front, we've got a USB type A, got two of those. Now both of those on the front are 10 gigabit per second ports. Next to that, you've got a TF card reader and an SD card reader. Now this has actually got some really good speeds as well. So if you are doing video editing or any kind of production work on your Mac, which a lot of people tend to, then this is great. I've done some testing with my own SD cards, getting somewhere in the region of about 170 to 200 megabytes per second reads and writes. That'll be on the screen so you can see that exactly. When it comes to the back of the device, more ports. So we've got another two USB type A's. So those are five gigabit per second. And also there's another 10 gigabit per second type A port. And next to that, we've got three USB type C ports. Two of them are 10 gigabit per second. And the one on the end there is for actually providing additional power. So if you've got some power hungry devices you're plugging in, you can plug in a USB type C power point, and then that will basically power the device. Not only that, there is another feature, which again, if you're purchasing a Mac or actually any Apple product these days, you'll know that straight out of the box, they come with very, very limited storage. And it's extremely expensive to upgrade the storage on your Mac minis or Macs. So this device actually has a built-in NVMe slot. So in this, you can put drives up to eight terabytes. Now imagine how much that would cost if you went down the Apple route, it would be astronomically expensive. Whereas with this, you can just pick up a cheap, inexpensive NVMe drive, maybe an older PCI Express Gen 3 by 4 drive, which are two terabyte drives these days at the moment, at the time of recording, somewhere in the region of about 70, 80 pounds. So very, very cost effective. And obviously this can give you significantly more storage. Best of all, it's actually very easy to install and everything that you need comes included with the package, including a screwdriver. All you need to do is undo the two screws, remove the top cover, they also include a heat transfer pad. So it's very simple to do. Get your drive, put it in. There's a little screw on the end to attach it into place. Put the strip over the top, replace the top cover, put your two screws in. Again, you're probably seeing this from some B-roll I shot earlier of me actually installing a drive into this particular chassis. And it's absolutely fantastic. And when it's connected up, even though it is on USB speeds, it's 10 gigabit per second, still getting somewhere in the region of about 900 megabytes per second. So that's basically double the speed of a traditional SSD. This is going to be still absolutely fine for video editing purposes. And in the Blackmagic test, you can see all of the formats which this is actually supportive of. So if you've got any concerns there, those are on the screen. So hopefully you can see those. If that wasn't enough, there is another fantastic feature of this. And that is this tiny little cutout here. So for those of you that have bought a Mac Mini, you'll know that the M4 version, for some bizarre reason, the designers decided to put the power button on the bottom. So if you're not using a docking station, then you've actually physically got to lift the device up to press the button, which is extremely inconvenient. So with this, you've got it in the correct position. And now with that little cutout, you've actually got room so you can just put your finger in to turn the drive on or off. Now connecting up is simplicity itself 
All it uses is a single USB Type-C connection. It would help if I had this around the right way. Put it into the dock and plug it into the middle port there. Absolutely fantastic. Now there are other versions of this on the market which actually use two of the ports. So that has some extra features, so additional display outputs if you wanted to go down that route. But I think for this particular device and also my needs, this is absolutely great. So now on the back, I've got an absolute ton of ports. So I've got still my two USB type C's, I've got another three USB type C's there, I've got three type A ports, and I've still got access to my original ports. I can also turn it on very easily just by using that button there. And on the front, it gets even better. Now I've got my two ports, plus I've got another two USB type twos, and also those really fast card readers. This is absolutely fantastic. And also because of the fact it's raised up slightly, you can still get air into the device to actually keep it cool. And also I think it looks extremely smart. Now it's not particularly expensive. Now pricing is gonna differ from region to region. So what I'll do is I'll put some affiliated links in the video description below so you can check out local pricing to you. And depending when you're watching this, I think there is gonna be an upcoming Prime deal on these to celebrate Prime Day. So potentially you might see even more significant discounts. At the moment, at the day of recording, this is retailing for $74.99, which I think is actually very good value for money. And it's actually one of the cheaper docks on the market. So anyway, I think that is pretty much it for the Ugreen CM841. I think this is an absolutely essential accessory if you're thinking of going down the Mac route. Even if you're just having a little dabble and you're not too sure what you're gonna do, whether you're gonna stay on your PC, whether you're gonna lead the Mac life, not having USB type A ports for me and also the minimal storage on these is an absolute deal breaker, but adding one of these fantastic Ugreen docks actually makes the device much, much more usable. So there you go, there's my thoughts on the CM841. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also that chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.